my doors in place and they fit perfectly. And um, I set this up based off of the existing hinges, which are overlay hinges, and I believe they're a half inch overlay, which is why I added a half inch to these sides, because your door is going to overlay onto that a half inch, so you need to build it out a little to account for that overlap. But I do have a couple videos on my channel about how to calculate for face frames, building cabinet doors, and all that sorts of stuff. Um, I'm not going to get into detail in this video because these are I already had these doors so I didn't make them and they already came with hinges so I didn't bother choosing hinges. I just kind of made my opening to account for what I was working with. Another thing to mention is these doors um, are just plain plywood with the edges wrapped with it looks almost like a poplar or a maple. It's a little hard to tell because they are older so they've they've changed color with age. but. There's traditional ways to make doors and then ways like this with plywood. And if you like this style, this kind of modern, very simple style, then more power to you. Make them like this. Making a door like this is much easier than making them traditional way with a floating panel and your rails and styles that are interconnected with um, tongue and groove. Like I said, the house used to be owned by an architect and then this guy moved in and He's keeping the kitchen the way it was, so these aren't super new doors. I would say they're at least five years old, and because they're made out of high quality materials, even just laying on top of my face frame, you can tell they're still flat and true. I measured the diagonals on them before I started. They're super square and perfect. This is another example of working with what you have, and even if you don't like the modern look, you could add a very uh, simple trim to the top side of these and turn them into shaker style doors fairly easily. It's just another thing to consider when kind of picking out stuff if you're making something yourself and don't have a ton of tools. The one setback to something like this is they're going to be heavier than other style doors, so depending on how large your door gets that could be problematic. And this maple veneer um, plywood, maple is one of those fine grain lumbers that doesn't take stain super well. So if you want to do something like this and stain it, just um, consider that as well. Fit for my doors in place, I'm going to start veneering all my edges. And that way I could permanently attach this bottom piece and the two side pieces as well. And then I could go through and add some spacer blocks on the inside and mount my doors. Once that's done, I'll sand, this top needs to be sanded, some of the uh, plywood's a little uneven, and then I'll veneer that as well. I usually just cut and make my own veneer, but they sell um, birch veneer at the Lowe's to match birch veneer ply, so I figured it would just be easier to use this. I've never actually used this, but it seems pretty self-explanatory. I have ironed before. So, and that's how you attach it. There's basically some glue on this. You can kind of see the glue in there. And the iron will heat up that glue and then it will stick to the edge of the cabinet. I also bought this edge trimmer for veneer. Um, I'm usually not one to buy specialty tools. I usually just trim my veneer by hand. But this had been opened and returned. You could see how it was actually rather ripped apart so it was like a quarter of the price of buying it new so I figured I would save myself some time and get that as well so like I said you need an iron to attach this stuff I have it set to the cotton setting which is what the recommendations are I also have some parchment paper and this roller so I use the parchment paper to pr protect the surfaces of the iron as well as the wood and then once it starts to stick you just kind of press it on there and roll it on.
So you're going to have a little bit of overlap on each side, which is where the edge trimmer comes into play. You can use a razor blade or even a file to trim that. But like I said, since that was so cheap, it was worth it to get it and then also trim the edges. But I really like the way that this stuff works. It went on there pretty easily. It's a nice match of what's already on there. So I'm going to finish up trimming off the rest of that top part and then wait for all this to cool to trim off these. After I did that first round of veneer, I veneered the edge of the scrap piece. kind of wanted to see, I wanted to try out the, the, the banding cutter, but I also wanted to see how hard it was to peel this stuff off. I'm just one of those people that I don't love relying on glue. And I tried pulling at this with my fingernail, and it doesn't come up at all. I'm actually a little surprised at how well it sticks on there. do my two sides with that one roll and then all of these pieces all that has to be trimmed and I'll have to do that top section once my sides are in place. I'd like to glue all that in place before the end of the day and then I'm gonna have to get some more veneer for this bottom and the drawer slides but I should be able to finish this up tomorrow. Then trimming these is super easy. I have a brand new blade in here and I just trim off the edges by cutting on the inside. They pop right off and then this you just line it up with your edge and the top. It's easiest I feel like if you hit it at a diagonal and then switch to straight and then run it down the whole piece and it trims off this little lip. So my two drawers are mocked up, both work, so now I'm going to switch focus to this top so I can get it done and sanded and out of the way. So what I have to do to finish this up is the only thing I have to do is mount these cabinets and then I'm going to lightly sand it. Um, this is one of those great projects where the customer said they want to um, put the finish on it themselves mainly because he's trying to match the existing cabinets which are going to look kind of like this so he wants to play around with the finish now these cabinets i'm going to sand and hopefully get them back to some of an original color so at least this piece matches because this is kind of set off a little bit from the rest of the kitchen but regardless um, there's not much sanding to do on this this um, veneered ply because it's already a very nice finish to finish this up, I have to mount some sort of spacer here so that the piece of the hinge that sits inside the cabinet can be mounted. So all I did was measure from the inside of my cabinet to the edge. On both sides is about two and an eighth. So I'm going to cut that piece because when I put it inside, I want to be able to have glue attached to the front and the side. So I'm going to take a piece of two by six and just rip it down to two and an eighth and mount those spacers. So I cut that piece, you can see how it fits in here. Everything's nice and flush. Now this is a really big spacer, but the reason I wanted it this big is so now I have all the surface area to glue to my face frame and I could screw into it from the edge and it will be really strong. So I'm just going to put some glue on these, clamp them in place, and then mount my doors. When that dried I took all the clamps off and eventually on the outside I'll put some screws in here because you won't see them just to kind of hold everything in place and then from the inside I was um, 
able to just trace the circles of where those screws are going to go. And then I had them set on here and I drew lines so I know what my reveal is going to be. So I lined it up with that before I trace those holes. Now obviously this method is not going to work for most people because they're not going to have be using pre-made doors with hinges already mounted to them. So like I said, if you're kind of deciding on how you want to make your doors and mount them, I have a couple videos. I'll link them in the description on how to make doors and different hardware to use for um, cabinet doors. I have the doors fitted on here. Um, the gap in the middle is a little off, but those are fine-tuned adjustments you can make with those hinges. The inside needs to be sanded a little bit, so that's good. So the last thing I'm going to do is this whole piece is going to have wings on either side. Opening for the space in the front is 39 inches wide. My cabinet's 30 and a half. So that gives me eight and a half inches left, which leaves about four and a quarter on either side of this cabinet. Now these are just going to be planks of wood so that they go, come flush with the wall. They're not going to serve any purpose. They're not going to hold anything up. They're basically fillers. So I'm going to take some half inch ply. Since I have enough half inch left, there's no reason to make these super thick. I'm going to cut them at five inches wide each, and it's already an eight foot piece. So I'm just going to leave them long, and then when I'm on site tomorrow, or when I end up delivering it, I could scribe it to the side of the cabinet as well as the wall and make a nice tight fit. The last thing to do, I already um, sanded this cabinet. Um, I'm going to sand this one. I'm just going to pretty, pretty much sand the veneer a little bit. The inside, um, I'm not going to go ham on it just because the inside is going to be covered by an oven. The drawers you'll never see. So I made sure the inside of this one was super clean, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time sanding and obviously the sides you're never going to see. And then this is ready for install. Um, I'm probably not going to get a ton of great footage of this, mainly because of where this is going in the house. It's in a nook and there's a hallway in front of it. So there's really no good angles for a camera at all. And even if you did, it would probably, the perspective would be really small because you can't get far enough away from the piece to show it. But I'll put a link in the description of some of my built-in um, installs. It's going to be pretty similar to that. You're going to be leveling this on a base, um, attaching it to the wall, and then adding the top cabinet and kind of a rinse and repeat process. So I'll put that on there and then hopefully I'll get some finished photos as well. Finished up that built-in uh, build a couple weeks ago and I think I mentioned part of the video I haven't edited the last and final part that um, I wasn't going to get a lot of good footage of the actual install and that's just because it was in such a weird spot in the house it was kind of in a narrow corridor there was no good angles to film it so I'm going to kind of show you in my shop how I finished the two edges um, the Cases were easy. I just put them on top of the platform, um, found some studs in the wall, screwed them to the wall and to the platform. Fairly self-explanatory. They just kind of plopped in space. For the edges where I did, the edges of my cabinets were not perfectly flat and that was because there was such a long space between the shelves on bottom and the shelves on top to fit the oven that it bowed a little bit. So what I did was I leveled a scrap piece of half inch birch veneer ply that I had left over from the job on the edge and from the underside I drew a line. I was left with something like this. Now since the wall was also not square, what I did, my straight line for the cabinets on one side and every six inches down the wall I drew um, uh, I measured in between the edge of the cabinet and the wall and I would every since it's just down I marked where that was so I put little tick marks the depth that that was so it turned out to be something like this and they undulated anywhere between um, being the same width to about a quarter inch different going up and down the wall I was left with something like this, which was kind of a perfect indicator of the differencing in width between the cabinet and the wall. Took it back to my shop, ripped off the excess 
you want to stay a little bit away from the line because like I said, it kind of bows and curves with the wall and the cabinet. Once I had that, I took a belt sander and just cleaned up to the line. Took it to the space. When I took it to the space, I took a scrap piece that was the whole length of the piece and attached it to the back side. Once I had that scrap on the back, I was able to bring it back to the house. It fit in that corner quite well because it was scribed. And then with that filler piece, I was able to butt it right up against where the cabinet was and screw it from the inside of the cabinet. I did that for two reasons. Number one, the right hand side of the cabinet um, was where the electric was. So if something happens down the line, you want to be able to remove this piece and you'd be able to take the screws out from the inside of the cabinets. The other reason was um, it's a very clean, sleek kitchen without a lot of stuff showing. I didn't want to have to put any hardware on the top of this piece. So by doing that and screwing it from the inside, I didn't have to use brads or anything on the edge of this piece and it looked very similar to this nice and flush. So I hope all that makes sense. I don't like having to rely on kind of mocking things up and re-showing it. Um, if you're doing a built-in where you're not butting up against two walls, this whole process is easier to do because you can tr traditionally scribe your parts and move your cabinets around. Unfortunately for me, that center cabinet went in place and I couldn't move it. So that's how I had to figure out the differences in um, width going up and down that wall. Now, this customer was a pretty cool person. I told him to send me some photos once everything was done because they were staining it and painting it, the, uh, clear coating it themselves. But honestly, people aren't jerks. They just sometimes forget to send me photos, but it isn't uncommon to get a photo a month or two months after I finish something. So if they do come down the line, I'll update the video thumbnails and add some of those photos.